So we're still in initiation. What happens next? One possibility is that the 50S subunit simply attaches to this complex, but as you see, that doesn't happen. So one of the initiation factors seems to be responsible for preventing a 50S association with this structure. Well, we're concluding here that the large subunit does not yet combine with the mRNA. Uh, it doesn't bind with the mRNA small subunit complex. Well, we know that amino acid tRNAs are going to have to become part of a translation structure, so perhaps that's the next thing to happen. People had analyzed or extracted E. coli polypeptides in the 50s and 60s, and in the 50s was the first time that people had begun to do amino acid sequencing. It was not automated, it was very tedious. But amino acid sequencing of a number of E. coli polypeptides, enzymes and other proteins, revealed that of the ones that were sequenced, 40% of these all had methionine at the amino terminus, at the end terminus of the polypeptide. From the genetic code dictionary, there is one codon for the amino acid methionine. And this is important for understanding the next bit of investigation. Several researchers found that, in fact, there were two transfer RNAs for methionine. You would have predicted that there would only be one, since you have only one codon. You would only need one methionine tRNA with its appropriate anticodon. But two of them were found. They were MET tRNA sub-MET, meaning they were found with methionine on them, so they were methionyl tRNA sub-methionine, meaning the tRNA for methionine. And then there was one with a methionine on it all right. It was a methionyl tRNA, but it had an organic group on it, a formal group, F-O-R-M-Y-L, formal group, which was part of the methionine. And so the tRNA then was called tRNA subformal MET, or F-MET for short. So these were the two tRNAs with their versions of methionine attached that were actually found in E. coli cells. Here we have them drawn out. I'm showing methionine here with a formal group circled on the formal methionine. And these were then, of course, attached or acylated, we say, to their respective tRNAs. It turns out that the tRNAs were isolated, purified, and actually sequenced. tRNAs are relatively short, they're 70 to 80 or so bases long, and were the first nucleic acids to be sequenced. Nowadays, DNA and uh, sequencing is routine, RNA sequencing less so, but not impossible. In the mid-60s, it was quite a feat to sequence actual RNA molecules. tRNAs were sequenced in part because they were short, and in part because they have a lot of base modifications which made the chemical sequencing of these things a bit easier. So you may remember, tRNAs are processed after they're transcribed to include a lot of unusual bases. So they could be sequenced, these two tRNAs, tRNA sub-MET and tRNA sub-F-MET, and they had different base sequences, but they did indeed have the same anti-codon. So the question was, what is F-MET? for? Why do you even have this? Why are there two tRNAs and why is there an F-MET? There were some speculations and one was the formal group is blocking the amino group of the methionine on which it is placed and what that might have done in evolution would be to prevent the formation of a peptide bond, to prevent a condensation reaction of another amino acid to the amino terminus of this formulated methionine. In other words, it might restrict chain growth in one direction, so that the chains would grow by addition to normal-looking carboxyl ends of amino acids, starting with F-MET. Well, that's a reasonable speculation, and in fact, in the mid-50s, experiments had been done to show that indeed, chain elongation during polypeptide synthesis does proceed by adding new amino acids to the carboxyl end, never to the amino ends. So the only purpose that the F-MET tRNA could reasonably serve is to be the first in a polypeptide chain, the first one to associate with a 30S subunit on a messenger RNA, perhaps with a few initiation factors. There is an enzyme in E. coli which has been isolated, which has the ability to recognize methionine when it's bound to the tRNA sub F-MET. And that formulating enzyme catalyzes putting a formal group on the amino end of methionine. That same enzyme is unable to recognize the methionine bound to a tRNA submet, which explains why one methionine gets a formal group but the other one doesn't. So that's the role of the formulating enzyme. As it says here, formal methionine tRNA, FMET, ah, there's one T missing I see here, but that's okay. Formal methionyl tRNA, FMET, is indeed the first in translation, and here's how it happens. That association requires another initiation factor added into the IFs shown here, and it requires GTP as well. 
So when you do this sort of experiment, no other amino acyl tRNA does this. But if you do these experiments, the GTP and the FMET combine with the 30S subunit and the initiation factors that are present to form an initiation complex.